So we're going to be showing you how to line comb or just properly brush your dog. Um, I know a lot of you won't have groomers at the moment. So here we've got Marvin. Now this is pre-bath. Now a lot of you are going to want to probably groom them out pre-bath because unless you have a high velocity dryer, you're probably actually going to cause more matting if you bath before you brush. So he hasn't been bathed in a couple of weeks. So he was brushed out last week, but not combed. So you want to go and go into a slicker brush or a pin brush to do the first work. And then afterwards, a couple of larger combs. And then finally, a thin comb. If you don't have all of these, it doesn't matter. One brush and one comb will be fine. Um, if you don't have a proper comb, a rake as well will work to help remove undercoat. So with the back leg, you'll have... Mum has quite a thick, dense coat, so he's got quite thick coat here, and then he's got his feather in here. So what we're going to do to start, is we're going to work from the bottom and work upwards. So you're going to want to brush everything first. like how you would work in your own hair, you're going to want to work in layers. Now if you only have a pin brush, it's going to work the same way. It's going to want to work in layers to sort of open the coat up for you. Can use grooming sprays if you've got them. They do say to condition the coat before you brush it. You can break it. That more so applies to show dogs. Just sort of pet dogs, you're not going to do serious damage to the coat if you don't spray it before you groom it. Remember to do underneath the legs as well. And really up in the base, just under the tail. You can see, got a little bit of hair out to begin with. It's not a huge amount. Marvin is quite regularly groomed though. So this may have a better result on your dog. So what we're going to do now, after we've brushed that, I'm just going to run a comb through it. I'm going to start at the bottom. And again, working in sections. If you're not comfortable holding the hair out of the way, you can use clips as well. It's just essential that you get through all of the layers of the coat. Your main problem parts are going to be your thighs, your rear feathering, your chest, and your front feathering. Your tail as well can cause a lot of problems, um, especially I have a desex dog as well. He tends to knot up a lot more in his pants and in his tail than he does anywhere else. Marvin, however, with a correct coat, tends to just hold coat a lot here and in his chest as well he can. I probably won't show you that on Marvin because I have trimmed it back. I might show you that on Onyx, depending on if he's got any coat to come out of it or not. You can see there where it pulls, that's where there's dead coat. 
or not. One of the two. As you can see, combing has resulted in a fair amount more than just brushing alone. Working lays both ways, so up and down, especially on the feathers, go side to side. Now, a lot of dogs are not going to let you do this easily. Remember, Marvin has been trained since he was three months old. That still doesn't mean he will not sit down on me. He most likely will once they get to the second leg. So just work in short amounts of time if that works better for you. But it is essential, especially if you can't get to your dog's regular groomer, to at least be running a comb all the way through your dog at least once a week. So leaving summer now, a lot of dogs are having drops. And with the weather all over the place, they tend to be inconsistent to what they were last year. I know a lot of dogs that are coming into the salon at the moment are having very weird coat changes. I know for a fact that Marvin is having a weird coat change. He hasn't dropped all through summer. And he's now having a semi drop, but not a large drop like I would think he would have. So you can see where I've neglected to brush. It's all in this part. So as you can see, more coat. Then what you're going to want to do is either use a finer comb or a different comb. Whatever you're comfortable with really. But what you need to be able to do is put your, dog, your comb right through your dog without it causing any resistance. As you can see, I haven't done that part yet. I'm not able to put the comb straight through the dog. So you just want to keep working at it. easier on myself and him. I'm actually going to use an oil to help de detangle this. Now that is a plush puppy oil. It's very strong and it's very expensive. Any detangling spray, even just a little bit of your dog's conditioner mixed up with water will help you detangle the coat. What you want to do is, if you are going to spray that in, work it into the coat with the brush. So it really penetrates into where all the dead hair is. Like you can feel, I can feel that it's thick here, and you can see where it looks thicker. So here it looks nice, it's not a lot of dead coat, here it looks thick, probably means there's a lot of dead coat in it. Again, you can 100% do this with your dog lying on the ground if that's more comfortable for them, if it's more comfortable for you.
if you do have a dryer at home, you can also blow the dog out before you do this. Blowing the dog out will release a lot of the dead hair that's just sitting in the coat. It does make your job a lot easier. You can see that it's still gripping a little bit in there. So if you do have a rake, a quicker way to do it as well. Use your rake. You don't have to put any pressure on it. The tool will do the job itself. So that will pull out any of the coat that is ready to come. If you're struggling and you find that the comb is still catching, the coat may not be completely ready to release. So get it to a point where you can brush and only a minimal amount of hair is coming out. Then what I generally recommend is bathing the dog. The warmer the water, the easier it will release the coat. So a lot of times when we're trying to remove coat from dogs, especially at the salon, we will use a de-shedding shampoo. Not necessary, but a lot of the times we're getting dogs that haven't been done in a long time. So what we do is we use as warmer water as the dog can tolerate. You really work it in and down to the skin. So it'll open the follicles for the hair and help release everything that's ready to come out. Good boy. So now it's gliding through a lot easier, except for there. So I'm lying, so I've just found another spot that I didn't get into. So I'll go back, again, work in lines to comb the dog. So what Marvin probably needs is a bath now, so a lot of this does not want to come. I, I can still feel in here that there's quite a bit of dead coat that's looking like it's getting ready to come out, but I'm having to use quite a bit of force to get it to come, and I, I'm not getting much of a payoff. So what I would do then is now go into a different section, especially with your tails. Um, that is something you want to focus on too. It does need to complete, be completely combed out because uh, it can tangle and it can mat very easily and very quickly. So the same thing goes working sections. Now with his, I am actually going to spray it with oil just because it looks a little dry. I am still trying to keep him in condition one day if we ever make it back to dog shows. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush it in. And really a lot of the important parts that a lot of you will miss, and even I miss sometimes, is right up at the base of the tail underneath because a lot of dogs 
don't like you touching there. It can be quite a sacred and sensitive place to them. And just brush it all. I'm just making sure that oil's really well working. through his tail quite well. If you're meeting any resistance and quite a lot of resistance, definitely need to go back and line comb the tail as well. This however is in pretty good condition today. So that's a pleasant surprise. Don't look over. Good. Good. Good boy. Once you're done with one part, you want to work up onto a different section. Um, so here's butt area or rump, as a lot of people like to call it. Just brush it again. It's the same technique all over the body. So work in small sections, whatever you're comfortable with. A lot of people will do leg, side, shoulder and front leg chest, the back a lot of people just do as one, um, your neck you may find does carry a lot of knots if they wear a collar, the collar or anything that sits in the coat and causes friction will cause cladding, um, so especially if you're walking on say a harness you've really got to focus underneath, so where that, wherever that harness sits you will find that there will be more knots, yes hello, can you turn around for me? So anywhere that that harness sits, say if it's across there, you'll find you'll have knots under here. Um, if they are matted and quite close to the skin and you can't brush them out, you can use scissors to cut them out. It is very easy to nick the skin if they're quite closely matted. I can see you. Hi. Um, so what you want to do is roll them over onto their back, probably getting somebody else to help you. And just very, very carefully, never pointing the scissors down towards the skin. Always point the scissors away from the skin. And just very carefully cut away at the mat until you can get it to a point where you can brush it out or where you've got the mat completely away from the skin. Um, a lot of groomers will do this with clippers. However, if you don't have dog clippers, don't use a beard trimmer or a hair trimmer because you will just wreck your clippers. Dog hair is a lot harsher than human hair and therefore we need stronger clippers to be able to do it. Um, I know Megan's done other videos on the trimming and stuff like that and that will just tie in many of the maintenance grooming that you're doing. You don't have to trim them, that is entirely a personal preference. Um, I know a lot of people grow the ears out. As long as you're ma able to maintain them and keep them not free, you can do whatever you want with your dog's coat. As long as you are maintaining it. Um, it is important to keep the hair the hair free and the skin breathing, especially throughout this time when the weather starts changing, it starts getting wetter. Um, you find a lot of dogs will start getting hot spots. I know it's not the usual time for hot spots, but with the humidity and the rain and everything like that, we're finding a lot of dogs are changing how their coat's behaving, and especially with our big coat of floofy monsters. They will be more prone to hot spots right at this moment if they haven't dropped their coat. Can you not please take the coat? Thank you. So yeah, so as you can see this bit of his body is not too bad. You can't see any major thick bits. The loin area right in here, where that leg comes down and sort of connects where the stomach is, that is a big area that a lot of people miss. It's not something I often think of either, not on my own dogs at least, and it does hold a lot of dead hair in there. A lot of dogs will pull away from you when you're doing it. 
seems to be a spot that they like to hide. You can see, decent amount of air. And it does just work back into that front part. This coat is not entirely ready to blow out. So, no. so we just keep working on it until we've got it to a point where not a lot of coat is coming out. I'll probably recomb him after I bath him. Because that will just loosen up some more coat. And using a high force dryer, I will get the rest of this out. So especially with feathering, he does have a lot of feathering, a ridiculous amount of feathering. So what we'll do is this is just another grooming spray. So plush puppy, oh my god. So all we're going to do is just spray it into the feathers. And then if it's going to be helpful, I'm just going to brush it in. Yeah. So it's easier to work in layers, especially with feathers as thick as his. Now these are trimmed back so they may look a little bit different to your dogs. So it's just basically working like if you've got mud or anything left in the feathers. Use a slicker brush just to get all that out. Just anything that's left in the coat I can take you stop. Anything that's left in the coat will start to tangle. Drool included. Drool does brush out very easily, but if it's left in, it can cause knots. Basically just working from the bottom to the top in a layering system. make sure you get in between the front legs as well because a lot of dogs have hair that will grow around around the leg and under the chest and sometimes we miss that when we brush it okay that's all nice and brushed now and the same principle so excuse me while I clean up my legs there. Start from the bottom, just work the, the comb from the skin out. And if you find a knot like that, that's obviously where some mud or some grass was. So sm the smaller the layers, the better. So you end up with a big bit like that. Sometimes you miss the bits at the bottom. So just really small lines, and don't pull another piece in until you can put the comb right from the, so the base of the skin all the way out without much resistance. Shouldn't really be any resistance. However, in a dirty coat, um, the dirt that's left in the coat can sometimes cause resistance to your tools, um, which does also make it easier for pulling out dead coat because it does give you that resistance when they're clean, they're nice, soft and silky. Sometimes your tools will just slip over 
the deep coat. In the small sections, working from the skin all the way out. This is great for just bonding with your dog as well, especially teaching them when they're young. Um, it's a good way to, you know, check over your dog as well, see if there's any lumps, bumps, sores, things that have changed. a bit of a slow process, especially when you're doing such small sections at a time, but it will pay off. So. And the reason we start from the bottom and work to the top is because when you're brushing from the top down, you're mainly only getting the top part of the hair. So with this entire feather, if I was to brush just from here down, it's going to come out as the hair goes. So I'm not going to be getting any of that part in where I'm combing. That's why we start from the bottom and work up. The same in any breed of dog. Long coated, double coated, drop coated, uh, oodles especially, is you want to work from the bottom and work up. You can see it's not a huge amount of hair but that amount of hair can cause a massive mat and once it starts they rub together they will just create more mats. I can run the comb all the way down and through. There's a little bit of resistance, but I'm going to say that's probably just the dirt in the coat. So there's not a lot of hair coming out. Yeah, you're the star of the show, but can you go over there, please? Over there. Thank you. And again, all of this part is the same as this. Start from the bottom and work up. Brush first, then comb. It is the same for any part of a dog, no matter what the breed. Unless you're a smooth coat, you probably don't need to brush and comb. Good rubber brush works well for them. Um, but you start at the bottom and you work up. You do not need a grooming spray, but it does condition the coat more. So if you're only shampooing when you're bathing and you think your dog's coat's a bit dry, sometimes it can help. Um, but yeah, so what you want to do is start at the bottom and work up. And then start at the bottom, comb out like that, and you want the comb to be able to go from the skin all the way out to the coat without causing any resistance, and then you're not pulling hair out. Like I can just run the comb over this now. I'm getting a little bit of resistance. This part does need to be combed, brushed and combed through. But you can see I can I can run the comb straight over the dog, and I'm only going to get a little bit of resistance. But generally what I'm doing is just running over the top coat. And that's where you end up with problems because you're not working from the bottom up. You will miss all of this lovely dead hair throughout the dog. So yeah, always work from the bottom up. As you can see, moving up. I collect all this hair that I've just brushed out of him. So it's a, it's a handful of hair. Now that is majority of this leg, a little bit of hair and that front feathering. So as you can see, it is essential, even though I groomed this dog last week, to really focus on combing. Um, 
especially if you're not able to get to your usual groomer. Uh, if you have somebody do it for you professionally, they may be close, they may not, but always keep up with your regular grooming. They do really need to be combed out at least once a week at this moment. With the weather changing and everything like that, they are changing coats. It's essential to keep them groomed out, especially for their health. 